Hello, and welcome to Break for Art. My name is Sarah Greenberg, and I am the manager of adult programs at the DMA. Today, we're going to take a few minutes to look closely at the Sanufo helmet mask from the mid 20th century. If you haven't already, click this window into full screen. Pause here for as long as you'd like to examine the image. As you're looking, count how many materials you notice. Take an inventory of the different components and don't rush yourself. What's your immediate reaction to this work? What about it do you think made you feel that way? This is a helmet mask made by the Snufo peoples of West Africa. There is a lot to take in, but at first glance, you may have noticed a few key features that prominently stand out. Most notably, the long muzzle and numerous tusks of varying length jutting out in every direction. What do these features remind you of? Out of the 34 horns on this mask, we've been able to identify 33 of them as coming from reedbuck antelopes and warthogs. The antelope horns are likely those stretching from the back, and the warthog are those shorter tusks protruding from the jaw and nose. When you think of these animals, what words come to mind? Both antelopes and warthogs are found in the wild. The maker of this mask chose to include a specific part, their horns, for a reason. Why do you think that is? When and why do animals bear their horns? When I think about that question, I imagine an animal with flared nostrils, wide eyes, and bristled hair, digging their hoofs into the ground, preparing to charge. Horns are largely used by animals for protection from predators and fighting animals of the same species for mating or territory rights. But if you're like me, you might wonder, what's the purpose behind combining these animal parts? Is there a significance? Although both these animals are found in the wild, they are not one and the same. What the antelope represents on its own is distinct from that of the warthog. But fused together, they embody new ideas. They manifest a new creature, a creature that is unique and specific to the person it costumes. Worn by a high-ranking member of the male-only Como Society, this mask serves as a deliberate warning to the malevolent sources who wanted to harm the community. It would have been worn during exclusive ceremonies in which the Como performer would connect with the spirit world, offer people solutions to their problems, and ward off any imminent danger posed to the community. Just like for the antelope or warthog, the horns on this mask serve to establish power, authority, and protection. They dispel threats from evil forces and affirm the wearer's elevated status within his community intimidating all who confront him. But unlike those familiar animals, which can be found in our natural world, the creature created in this helmet mask is unknown to us. And that's perhaps what gives it the most power and makes it more fearsome than either of those two animals alone. It's mysterious and strange, and we don't know what it is ultimately capable of. Adding to the mask's ferocious appearance are prominent zigzag teeth, projecting glass eyes, reflective mirrors, haphazardly wrapped metal wires, and an overall encrusted surface. Let's take a moment to consider the encrustation coating the surface of this mask. According to our curator, Rosalind Walker, it is at least partly millet beer, an alcoholic beverage common throughout Africa. Dried on in thick layers, it appears as though the encrustation is the result of accumulated dousing built up over time. What can this tell us about the mask? For one, it indicates something about the life of the mask, what it underwent, and how people interacted with it. Secondly, it reveals the power of the mask is derived from more than just the sculptural parts. The mask wasn't continually cleaned to restore it to a pristine state. Whatever material coats the mask is essential to its function as a vehicle of spirituality. The sacrificial material retains its power beyond the moment of application.
Without it, the mask is incomplete and effectively rendered dormant. Taking a closer look at some of the other external features provides additional information about the owner of the mask and how he wanted to be viewed by his community. Around the lower jawline, cowrie shells are attached. A form of currency in the region in the past, these shells likely represent the Como leader's affluency. Moving up the head, we see small mirrors punctuating the place where the lower and upper jaw meet. What do you imagine the effect is for someone who is looking at the mask and sees their reflection mirrored back? Finally, as we make our way up to the most densely packed portion of the mask, we see that the eyes are made from the bases of wine glasses. This hints that the work is contemporary and that the blacksmith who made it was open to using imported materials. While we now have a greater understanding of the purpose the mask serves for those who view it, what about for the person who inhabits it? What is his relationship to the mask? Made especially for him, this mask asserted the owner's profound knowledge and expertise. It was an expression of his personal aesthetics. When he wore it, he temporarily embodied the spirit of the composite creature and harnessed the powers it engendered. In this way, the Como leader stood in a privileged position in society, protected by the ancestors and revered by the living. Are there any articles of clothing that you wear that empower you? How do you think your dress impacts your self-image and the way others perceive you? As we look at this work, it's important to remember that its context in an art museum is vastly different than its intention for use in ceremonial practices. I want to leave you with one last question today. How do you think seeing this helmet mask in an art museum differs from seeing it in its original culture? Thanks for taking some time to enjoy this Tanufo helmet mask with me. Come visit us at the DMA soon to see this mask in person and discover more through the joy of looking.